Hello and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here this week, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else who you think might find this information helpful over the course of the coming week. We have a new face joining us here in the city of Gardner uh, over at the engineering department, Mr. Robert Oliva will be joining us as our new city engineer. Uh, Rob joins us, he's the current DPW director in the town of Lunenburg, uh, but he previously worked for the city of Gardner as the assistant director of public works and is coming back to fill the city engineer's position. Our city engineer, Chris Coughlin, uh, has decided to go part-time and he took the DPW business manager position that was recently created over at the DPW. Uh, so he will still be here working for the city just on a part-time basis and then uh, Rob Oliva will be joining us as a full-time city engineer. For those of you who may not know what the city engineer does, they're in charge of making sure we're in compliance with all of our stormwater management regulations from the uh, DEP, so the Department of Environmental Protection and the Environmental Protection Agency at the federal level. All of the different bridge structures in the city are graded and rated uh, by that department. Anytime a person needs a driveway cut uh, into the streets, those permits are done through that engineering department. And there's a lot of actual site work. They oversee our GIS mapping department uh, and different aspects of that as well that the city engineer's office does that some people may not realize. So thank you, Rob, for joining us. Thank you, Chris, for staying with us. And I look forward to seeing how we can uh, grow the city and keep moving forward with the new team that we have over at 50 Manka Drive at the DPW building. I want to thank everyone who came out to participate in our COVID rapid test distribution day this past week at the PACC. Uh, I want to thank Representative Zlotnick and Representative Ferguson for helping us make this a really regional event uh, for this second event here with Gardner and Westminster uh, and everyone else who participated, uh, Mary Beth Bedoin, uh, Council President Elizabeth Kaczynskis, uh, Representative Zlotnick, Nolan King from Zlotnick's office as well, and uh, several other people who just volunteered to make this possible, the DPW for helping deliver the test from City Hall over to uh, the PACC and everyone else. It really was a team effort to try to make this work. Uh, and we were very happy to be able to get between the last test distribution and this one, 12 pallets of tests out into the public for North Central Massachusetts. So thank you all very much for your assistance and your attention to this matter here. This past week, the Gardner Board of Health voted to fully lift all mask advisories citywide and fully lift the mask mandate for public buildings here in the city of Gardner. Uh, so you'll notice those signs are no longer hanging around the buildings here. So while uh, we do recommend people do still follow CDC guidelines and follow uh, what is happening when Haywood Hospital puts out their weekly updates. Uh, the Board of Health is no longer recommending masks uh, for people in the city here due to our higher vaccination rate and our lower uh, positivity rate among those who are testing positive for the COVID-19 virus. So thank you very much for everyone who paid attention to those when those uh, issues were raised and I look forward to seeing us how we move forward now uh, as we approach the two-year anniversary of when this virus began on March 12th uh, at the two-year anniversary of the initial economic shutdown that we had here in Massachusetts. Uh, this past week we had a couple snowstorms. We want to remind people how important it is to sign up for Code Red uh, here in the city of Gardner. Uh, Code Red lets you know uh, when we're having a parking ban, if there's a snow squall coming as we saw uh, before if there are different events like the COVID test distribution day or the old vaccination clinics that we had There's a lot more that goes on there. It's not just the city who sends out code red information It's also the National Weather Service It's also different federal agencies that partner with code red as well So it is very important to sign up for you can do that on the city's website or on the police department's page Or if you don't have access to a computer you can call my office at any time and we'll register you here over the phone as well That's a very important service to have uh, We do ask that people be patient with the DPW as we move forward with the different plowing and sanding and salting operations that we have here, we do want to remind people that you can bring a bucket to pick up some sand at the DPW uh, facility at 50 Manka Drive at the corner of West Broadway and Manka as well. Uh, so please take advantage of all of those opportunities that we have here. Uh, it was announced this past week that there are some temporary changes over at the Gardner Police Department. Those are personnel matters, so I, there's not too much we can say there. Uh, we can say that the chief and the deputy chief have been placed on paid administrative leave for non-disciplinary reasons, and we want to highlight that it is a non-disciplinary reason. It's following votes of no confidence taken by the four police unions. Uh, that's the patrol officers, the superior officers, so the sergeants and lieutenants, the dispatchers, and the animal control officers. So what's currently being done is we currently have someone doing 
a review of the department's operations. They've interviewed the employees of the department. Uh, we've just completed interview 35 with that individual. The chief and the deputy chief are also being interviewed as part of this, so they are in the process as well. And it's just a way to find out what's going on, what could be changed, and how to make the department better. In the meantime, uh, retired police chief Vincent Alfano, who used to be the police chief in Bolton and Ashland, uh, is helping lead the department there. And there was a story and a profile about him in the Garden News this past week as well. So we want to thank you for your patience. And particularly in we're asking people to remember that these are personnel matters, that we have to make sure that the review and the investigation that's happened is done as fair and objectively as possible. So that's why the specifics of the investigation, what uh, was the issues that were raised and things like that, cannot be made public until after the investigation is done, at which case the investigation report will be considered public record and can be obtained at that point. Uh, but we want to make sure that everything between what's happening now and when that report gets released is as fair, honest, and objective as possible uh, and isn't swayed by some public opinion by the rumor mill going once a story gets out about something and changes and changes. Uh, so that's why uh, things in terms of the details of the investigation can't be released now. But we want to let you know that we are doing everything we can to make sure that everything gets done in a quick and efficient manner that's also effective and fair for those involved. So thank you very much for your patience on that matter as well. Thank you very much uh, to Anne-Marie Bouchard from Anne's Bridal for organizing a car parade for Mr. Norman Deneau this past week. Those of you who may know Norman, he's the individual who sits at the corner at the intersection of Cross, uh, excuse me, Central, uh, Main Street, Pleasant Street, Parker Street, uh, and West Line to wave at the cars going through the downtown square. Uh, he had his 90th birthday this past week, and on Monday, which was President's Day, we had a car parade like we used to do at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic so that he had some extra cars to wave to as he celebrated his special day. So happy birthday, Norman, and thank you very much, Anne-Marie, for putting that event on for us to be able to celebrate someone who's a staple in our community. Uh, 90 years old is 10 years less than Gardner's been a city, so he's certainly seen a lot in his lifetime, and uh, we look forward to seeing him a little more, too, in the window. Uh, as we drive by through the downtown square. And if you drive through, please wave to him too. It really does make his day. I want to congratulate our athletic director and recreation director, Dan Fort, who has received this year's Damco Award from the MIIA, the uh, Massachusetts uh, Athletic Association um, group that we have for the different uh, school districts in central Massachusetts. Uh, it's given to an athletic director who's within their first five years, who's made a very big impact and really grown in their position. Uh, if you look at all the stuff that Dan has done, not only for the city and the recreation department, but also for the athletic department, it's he's grown new indoor soccer programming, new uh, athletic clinics for football, basketball, soccer, baseball, excuse me, and has really helped grow those programs. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about Dan and his award today is that for the f second year in a row, we've been able to make it so that no student who participates in Gardner Public School as athletics has to pay user fees. And that's something that we're hoping to continue. And in fact, it's something that's built into the school budget that I'll be proposing before the school committee very shortly is to fully waive those user fees for our students. This year, we received $10,000 from the Community Development Block Grant that we talked about in last week's update, and then an additional $12,500 from the Williams Rockwell Fund. Our athletic fees, when they used to be in existence, were $100 per student per sport, unless you played hockey, in which case it was $500 per student. So this is something that we've been able to completely waive for all of our students in Gardner Public Schools to make sure that no matter what a student's economic background is, no matter what's going on in their home lives, they don't have to worry about not being able to express themselves on our fields and our courts and our ice rinks. That's something that, just like I've been a big proponent of our music programs in the past, not every student's a music student, not every student's an academic student. Some people find who they are on a court or find a way to express themselves on the field. And we want to make sure that we aren't doing anything that bars a student from participating in those items. So thank you very much, Dan, for getting us those grants. And uh, thank you very much to Dr. Pellegrino, our Director of Administration and Finance, Mark Hawk, and everyone on our finance team with the schools for working with my office and making sure that that gets put in the budget so that we can continue that trend moving forward. Uh, speaking of athletic fields, this past week, the City Council voted to request more time on a free catch appropriation request that would open up a new grading, seating, leveling, and uh, new field options at the Gardner High School, Gardner Middle School, and soon to be Gardner Elementary School area. Uh, we want to make sure what, uh, people understand what this project is, so please uh, keep an eye out for the next Finance Committee meeting. We will have a special presentation as to what this project actually entails, the funding, where it's coming from. Uh, a lot of it is leveling the fields that have kind of uh, 
gotten uneven over the years. If you stand on one sideline of the field, you can't see the other sideline because the field's bow in the middle. Uh, right now, as it stands, we can't field a softball field this year unless we go move our softball uh, team over to Jackson Playground because Stedman Park has become that uneven and that in disrepair. Uh, so that's part of this work here too. It's adding a baseball field that's high school regu regulation size at Gardner High School's location. It's adding batting cages. Uh, a new soccer field, a new practice field for the football team and the marching band. So there's a lot of students that will get affected by this project here. So please, it'll be a very interesting uh, and informative session that you see that before the Finance Committee when that gets posted. So please keep an eye out for that when that comes around. In terms of other things that were before the City Council this past week, uh, the City Council approved uh, different money orders to purchase new trash cans for the downtown. Those will have the lids and the, uh, the drawers that you open up so you can slide in there. That should be able to help some issues uh, that we've seen with the current Victorian style trash bans where the, uh, the tops are open to the elements so the winds can blow them around. We've had several issues with raccoons getting into them as well. Uh, so that should all be fixed with these new uh, trash cans that we're purchasing through the Mass Core program and that's uh, projects constructed by those who are inmates at the uh, for the Department of Corrections here in the city. Uh, they do those as part of their community service items while they're in our prisons uh, statewide and they are on the state contract list so we were able to get them done. We were able to see about 10 barrels purchased for the $15,000 that were appropriated. We also uh, got matching grants, uh, our matching appropriations approved for the different Mass Trails grant and the uh, Mass uh, Massachusetts Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, uh, which allows us for different infrastructure such as culverts and bridges. The Mass Trails Grant is to extend the bike trail from the skating rink behind the uh, Lodge of Elks, behind the Greenwood Pool, up uh, on the edge of the Crystal Lake Cemetery and up to Route 140 that way where the bridge will be constructed at the end of next year. Uh, so that's what that bike trail grant is going for there. And the culvert grant that we received is to replace the culvert at Keys Road. Once that culvert is fully repaired, our plan is to go through and pave Keys Road, Princeton Street, and all of the, uh, the streets in that area as well. Uh, so as we move forward with that, we'll see that. There was also an additional appropriation request uh, to help defend the city in a lawsuit that attorney Scott Graves, who's a former city councilor of us, has uh, put forward regarding a appeal of a public records request. Uh, there was a record requested uh, by the city that's related to an ongoing litigation suit for the city. Uh, the city denied the request because of its relation to an active lawsuit. The um, former Councilor Graves did appeal that to the Secretary of State's office, which is the legal next step. The Secretary of State's office said that the city was right in withholding that until the litigation is done. Uh, so former Councilor Graves is now suing both the city and the Secretary of State's office. Uh, the city was served with a lawsuit in August of last year. The Secretary of State's office was not sued until October, so the city did bear the brunt of that cost at the beginning, uh, which is where we've got the $20,000 that we've spent on this lawsuit so far. So if you saw that uh, and were confused by that, that's the very high-level Cliff Notes version of that. And there is more information that was included in the City Council's packet uh, for this meeting this past year that's available on the city's website if you have any questions on that. Excuse me, this past week, not this past year. Uh, so if you have any questions on that, you can find that on this, uh, the agendas page of the city's website. We also had a couple of ordinances go to review by different committees. An arcade ordinance to remove the current section of the city's ordinance book uh, related to arcades. Per that ordinance that was passed in 1984, it says that the city can only have one arcade for every 10,000 people. However, that hasn't been enforced because per the definitions in that same ordinance, Gardner 10 pins, uh, the candle pin, bowl away, uh, in our downtown, the claw machines at Walmart, all of the different uh, video game machines at the different social cl clubs and veterans organizations that we have here in the city of Gardner are all actually considered arcades under that ordinance. So where it hasn't been enforced since the 80s and it really is very restrictive, uh, we're looking to see if we can just get rid of that uh, section of the ordinances completely because we really haven't had to deal with that. We are also uh, looking at different ordinances to increase outdoor seatings for restaurants that codifies the different uh, aspects of the executive order that Governor Baker put in during the COVID-19 pandemic so that we can continue that forward since that executive order has since expired and a new blighted nuisance vacant and abandoned building ordinance that gives our building department and our health department more teeth to go after absentee landlords uh, to help prevent a problem before it becomes a problem to the point where we don't have to have any options but tear down the building. This will help us so that we can help preserve some of the buildings that we have here that have come into disrepair. So keep an eye out on those meetings as well. Uh, I want to congratulate the Garden High School uh, ice hockey team. 
for making it to the Central Mass Championship this past week. And while uh, we did lose the championship game to Oakmont, it is something that Gardner High Hockey is coming back. And I want to congratulate our students for making it that far and uh, thank our coaching staff and our students for really uh, putting Gardner back on the map in terms of, or I should say back on the ice in terms of how we've been able to grow and increase in our ice hockey efforts here in Gardner. So thank you very much and congratulations to those students. And I want to close by wishing my condolences to the families of Mr. Kyle Berger, a uh, senior at Gardner Academy uh, who passed away this past week. Uh, it's always hard when we lose any of our students here. Uh, so to his family, friends, and teachers, I want to wish my condolences. I also want to wish my condolences to the family, former students, and friends of former Garden High School te uh, English teacher, Mr. Michael Crowley, who also passed away this past week after a long battle with uh, cancer and COVID-19. Uh, he left an impact on many students here in the city of Gardner, uh, and it will certainly be missed. So to both of those families, on behalf of the city, uh, just know you're in our thoughts and prayers here. However, that concludes this week's update. As always, if you have any questions on anything that was said, please feel free to contact a City Hall in my office at any time, and I look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thank you very much, and have a good day.